Hello and welcome to the second in a set of tutorials for XFX Toolkit version 2 that now has added object tracking. If you haven't got the plugin pack installed, please follow the link below. The first tutorial covered the new tracking pointers. Now we'll move on to the existing plugins that have object tracking added to them. Let's look at the popular circle highlight plugin. We'll add the plugin to a clip of a glider and again go through the tracking procedure. First of all, put the bounding box around the area you wish to track. Hit the track button below or in the inspector. Wait for the tracking to finish and the keyframes to be written. This is all being tracked in real time, nothing's been sped up. Then toggle from track to edit template mode to configure the plugin. Just a reminder, all the plugin tracking instructions can be found at the top of the plugin in the inspector. I'll move to the center and now you can see I can grab the OSC and move that because we're in edit template mode to where I want. Hit play and that should follow the tail. Perfect. Now you can see there's build in and build outs. Those are for the fade. As you see, we have the fade here at the moment. I can turn that off and it can just be a cut. Or if you have the fades on, then the fade speed will actually come into play. And I, if I pull that right down to kind of just under three frames, you can see that comes on really quickly. But by default, it's on about 20. And below that, we've got the position and size. So these, this is actually reflecting what's going on with the on-screen controls. The invert mask, I'll actually leave just for a while. We'll come back to that. That is really quite cool, so I'll show you that a bit later. But onto the text, that's optional. You can turn it on and off. You can, of course, change it to whatever you like. Uh, it can be whatever size you want and whatever font you want as well. The outline, you can control the width. You can control the color. Yeah, you might not see that too well, the red, so let's leave it with white and the opacity on there as well. Let's leave it at 100% just, just for the moment. Now, when the fade comes in, you'll see the background's dimming. That's because we've got the dim option actually toggled on here. And, and you can slide this to wherever you want. You can go right to dark, you know, dark if you want to. Likewise, you've got desaturation, blur, and pixelate, and all of these do the same thing. They'll actually transition to the state you've got the slider. So desaturation, let's pull that right down so it's black and white. And as you can see, we've got color in the circle and black and white around the outside. Now, I said I'd come back to this in invert mask, and what that does, is it flips everything the other way. So we've now got black and white in the circle and color outside. You say, well, why might you want to use that? Because there might be an occasion where you want to blur something. Let's say we don't want to see this MZ on the tail. So what we can do is we can toggle blur and blur it out. So now you won't see that MZ. The same goes for the pixelate. You can actually pixelate the inside of the circle. It's not really designed for face blur, but it's a quick way of covering up a logo. And also underneath that, we've got the drop shadow. And what this does is it provides a way of the actual whole graphic standing out from the background. So if I pump up the opacity on that and push the distance out, you can see that makes everything stand out from the background. And of course, you can always go back to go track and track again. You're not locked into the original track. Onto another plugin, and this time it's the magnifier. And it's a new plugin. You might say, why isn't it the set above? Well, it's because it's very similar to the circle highlights, as we can see from on screen here. But, if I actually move the OSC, you can see there's a bit of a magnification going on. And if I place that on the MZ, which I tracked earlier, I can actually blow that up and then do a really good magnify 
And there you can see that's absolutely pixel perfect on there. You can actually go, keep this going and go bigger. How about that? Even better. Look at that. That is a great bit of tracking on there. Now, it hasn't got the invert mask, so you can't flip everything the other way, but it's got all the other bits. You can adjust the text. Uh, you can adjust the dim level, desaturation, etc. And of course, you've got the build in, build out, and the fade speeds. So it's very similar to the circle highlight, but it hasn't got the invert mask. Next up is the arrow highlight. Now, I've already done the tracking, and I track the tail again. But make sure I'm in Edit Template. Go into the middle of the clip. And here we can see we've got an arrow and some text. Grab the on screen control and I can move that to point to the tail. And here, where it gets fun, if I grab the little arm, I can actually angle that arrow where I want and the text will follow and still stay horizontal on there. So hit play. I'm a little bit out. Let's put it over here, maybe. That's better. And I can move the text maybe over to here. Just click on it and it'll move. Now, looking in the inspector, I again have all the controls you'd expect from the previous plugins. No invert mask, obviously. Control the text, opacity, but I can also alter the arrow size and the width, and also the end caps of here. If you don't want an arrow, you can just say, well, I'll have it square or maybe round um, and extend that out. But this is really designed to, for, for an arrow on there. And again, you've got the drop shadow just to make everything stand out a bit on there. A bit of blur. Very easy and quick to use. The next plugin is 3D Spotlight. And as you can see, I've already tracked the tail on the video, but you don't see any effect. That's because we're still in track. The moment I go to Edit Template, you'll see we have a spotlight. I can control that. With that, that's tilting up and down, and that's tilting left to right. And when I hit play, we get a spotlight that follows the glider. Lots of controls, as you would expect in the inspector, the build in and build out, and the speed as per normal. And I can also control things like the soft edge of the light and the ambient color if you actually want to see the background at the same time. On to the eight point garbage mask. And as you'd expect, I've already got it on the timeline and I've already tracked the tail. Now you can see the points are moving, but I can't see anything. That's because I need to go into edit template. And immediately you see I've got a cutout, put the center onto the point I tracked. And now I can move all of these eight points for a cutout. The checkerboard is actually the lack of alpha. So this would actually be superimposed over another image or video. But I've got invert mask, so I can actually cut a hole. Or if I go keep background and then click on the dim, it will dim the outside or desaturate, blur, or pixelate as we've seen before. So I can actually highlight that glider there. And then we've got a tracking mask that goes with it. And you'll probably be able to do a bit of better job with the control points than I have there. Very flexible, a great way to highlight something, or indeed cut a moving shape out. Onto the Telestrator, and this draws a line on screen in relation to eight points that you can position anywhere you like. Uh, I've already done the tracking and I've already positioned some points on here so you can see this straight away. Now, the tracker we use is Apple's Object Tracker, and that really only works in X and Y. So that's why we've got this heli going um, across the landscape here. It, it won't work if you zoom and it won't work if there's um, forwards or backwards movement at the moment. Hopefully we're trying to improve that for a future release. But if we just look at this, we can see the line going across. Now, you might notice there are no build in and build out controls on here because you might want the um, hold of the line to last for quite a long time, not just the, the maybe 30 frames of the, of the build out. So what we have instead is we have a start hold and end hold. And if I pump up the end hold on here, you'll actually see that the line draws and then stops. If I increase it a bit more, it draws on quicker and stops stops quicker. Again, you can do the same with the start 
although that's only going to delay the line drawing on. Um, and start point and end point actually control where it finishes and starts. So you might actually say, I only want to draw halfway on. So there you go. So that's only drawn halfway on and it actually finishes three quarters into the clip. So it's a way to be able to control the animation of the line without having to do keyframes because that would be really clumsy on there. On to the last effect and that's underliner and that's very similar to the telestrator but this time we've only got three points that a line animates through. So it's great for underlining or highlighting something on screen and of course it'll track. You might notice that this has got a build in and build out because you're not going to want the animation of the line to go on for a long time. So you can toggle that on and off should you wish. So that's going to be static there all the time. Or you can vary the draw on speed and draw off speed. So at the moment that's 30 frames, but I can bring that down and have it come on a lot quicker than that. Again, if you stretch this clip out, the because we're using the build in and build out, they'll still be the same speed animations and the effect will expand in the middle. But if I don't want the line to draw on, if I want it to be there all the time, but just fade in by pushing these down to zero and then adjusting the fade in and fade out speed, I'll have the line fade in and fade out on there. As you'd expect, we've got controls for opacity, the line color, the end cap, so you actually could make an arrow on the end if you really want to. I'll leave that on round. And also we've got a drop shadow so it stands out from the background, although you're not going to see that on black there. So please check out the six plugins that have had tracking added and also check out the new Magnify as well. In the next tutorial, we're going to be looking at more of the tools in the toolkit.